You are watching Apostolic Radio Charlotte. We're to see how that will all come to a spiritual fruition. Amen. Brother Sean, come up here. We're honored to have Brother Sean and Sister J.D. Sarsfield here. Amen. They've been out crossing the fruited plain, raising money to go as missionaries to the continent of Africa. I'm going to let him tell you a little bit about it. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. It is so good to be with you here today. I was thinking when Pastor Nathan asked if I would say anything, I thought, man, what can I say? Uh, but since we were here last in January in December, we've probably been in over 100 churches in, I don't know, 20, 25 different states around the country. And uh, we have seen God do some amazing things. Uh, two of the stories that I can think of off the top of my head, which I would like to share with you, is do not stop believing in a miracle. You never know what God's going to do. If you just believe, God is able to do anything. Two stories. We had a young lady, first time visitor in a church. It was a solid white church in the middle of nowhere. Two guests, African American. They come in, first time there. They were greeted with love, they were greeted with compassion. They came up to the altars and people started praying for them. We didn't know, we had never met them before. I had preached a message, she came forward, she asked for prayer, everyone prayed with them. All of a sudden, she started shouting and she started dancing. None of us knew what in the world was going on, but she just started rejoicing. All of a sudden, she started shouting the words, I can see. We had no idea what that meant. And she started yelling louder, I can see, I can see, I can see. Little did we know she had went blind in one eye and she was near blind in the other eye. We didn't even pray for her to receive a healing that day. All we did was pray, God, you see this young lady, you see where she's at, and we ask you to touch her body, touch her mind, and help her today. And she began shouting in victory as God brought the healing to her. We were very excited too. We went to another church and a, a young man came to the front. He had his crutches and he had a cast from his thigh all the way to his ankle. Couldn't bend his knee. We found out he had torn the ligaments in his knee and they were going to have to go in and do surgery. He could not bend it. He could not move it. It was completely immobilized because he had tore all of the ligaments in his leg. He came up and I bent down and began praying for him. And I'm so thankful we have a God that hears. Because as I laid my hand on his knee, I felt three pops. And I thought to myself, well, I wonder what that was. I stood up and I looked at the man and I said, I, sir, I'm just going to tell you. I said, I felt three pops in your knee when we started praying for you. And he looked at me and he actually surprised me. I guess sometimes we're not ready to receive that which God does. But he said, well, will you help me take my cast off? I thought to myself, well, sure. So after about five minutes and 15,000 straps, he gets it off and he's just standing there. The man jumps up, leaps, and takes off running around the church. He left his crutches and his cast at the altars. Sometimes those things that are upon our shoulders, those things that are tearing us down, if we bring them to Jesus and we allow him to lead, we allow him to touch, and we put our faith into action, he wants us to leave some things at the altar. Are you willing to receive today? Amen. Man, the miracles just keep coming. We're so excited. We've been traveling on deputation for about a year. Just the other day, we were in service in Michigan, and we needed, I don't know, about a third of our support, monthly support. And I do want to stop and say, Pastor, thank you. And everybody in this place, you guys do partner with us on a monthly basis. So thank you for doing that. 
But we still needed to raise about a third of our monthly partnership. And we were in a, a special camp meeting. And they had mentioned they were going to try and do something for us. And as we were sitting there, they had raised a significant amount of funds for us. Well, the next day we went back and we're excited to report that the camp meeting in Michigan raised all of the remaining partners we needed for our monthly support in one day. That means in under one year, we were able to see God bring in all of the monthly partnerships we needed. That knocked eight months off of deputation for us. Y'all aren't excited enough. You have no idea what that means. That's like 30 to 40,000 miles we no longer have to travel. That's another 100 or so churches we do not have to visit. That means we can return to the, na to the continent of Africa and continue to work and to reach lost souls sooner. We are so thankful for what God has done. And we're so thankful for what he's continuing to do. Our life is in God's hands. When we put it in his hands, he is so faithful. He is so just. He does things that sometimes you just have to step back and look and say, God, thank you. I'm not worthy of this. I'm really not. But thank you for having the faith and believing in me enough to say, I'm going to help you. My son, I love you. I'm with you. If you go about my business, I'm going to be there right with you. And I thank this church for your prayers. I can tell you it's not always the easiest. Although it is exciting, it's not always the easiest to, to travel like we have been. Um, but we thank you for your prayers. And if it's okay, can I mention two prayer requests? Okay, I've got two very specific prayer requests. And I'm going to ask you to, to pray. Actually, I guess I could say three. Um, one of them is the nation that we are going to. We've, we've stopped mentioning the nation as much as as we have in other places because the turmoil there has has begun to get a little bit worse uh, just about every week we're finding out about new uh, extremist attacks that are occurring uh, throughout the country um, we're facing some religious groups that want to raise and spread forms of radical islam and as a result of that there is a lot of turmoil a lot of uh, problems that are occurring in that nation. So if you would just pray with us that God would send peace to the region of West Africa so that the gospel can be preached. We do have one church in that nation and every day that they hold service, their lives are out in the open and we're just praying for safety for them. So I'm going to ask you to please join in prayer with us for that church there. Amen. We also are, we are going to continue traveling for just a few more months. We've raised all of our personal support, um, but missionaries also raise money for projects. We raised $160,000 in a year. It's amazing what God has done, but we've still got a significant portion, almost 50000 we need to raise from now until the end of the year. If you can pray with us. We're believing God that he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or expect. Will you believe that with me? Amen. Amen. And the last prayer request I have, many of you have already congratulated us, but I would ask you to please pray for my wife and I as we continue to travel because we are expecting a little one in the month of January and we surely need all of your prayers. So if you can just pray for us, pray for me. I think I'm more nervous than she is. Pray that I don't gain any more weight. You know, all of those important things that come at this time of life, we would greatly appreciate it. It's so good to look out and see family. See, see people that I love, that I trust, that I grew up with. We covet your prayers. And Pastor, thank you for this time.
Amen. Uh, I tried to tell Brother Sean before church, you know, I, I, tr- I tried to explain to him that, if he, you know, marriage could lead to children. And um, he shook his head. He said, I, no one really explained it in detail, though. <laughs> We're so excited for them. And... Uh, what the Lord's doing through them and with them. Very quickly, James chapter number 1. If you'd turn with me, James chapter number 1. We're going to read at verse number 2. Just so everyone knows, uh, at the end of our service, every Sunday we have a prayer service. You might think, what is that? That is where we believe in faith and pray one for another for the Lord to minister and bless and help and heal and strengthen. Um, We don't want to just come and go through a service. We want to have an opportunity to open our hearts to the Lord. Amen? And so I I don't want any of our our guests here today, I don't want you to feel uncomfortable. All we're going to do is pray one for another. We will not single you out unless you desire that and step forward. We will come to the front. But it is our time where we exercise active faith. And we believe together. James chapter number 1, verse number 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trial. Somebody say, really? (laughs) Brother, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Uh, Drop down with me to verse number 12. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him him. Amen. I'm preaching about trouble this morning. That means I'm preaching about you. (laughs) I'm preaching about trouble. That means I'm preaching about you. Somebody say in Jesus name. God bless you. You may be seated. If you will listen with your quick ears, I will move along in a brisk manner. Shakespeare's famous for the saying, double, double, Toil and trouble, fire, burn, and cauldron bubble. We all have trouble in our life. And James starts out his epistle on the subject of trouble. He doesn't spend much time greeting anybody. He doesn't try to ease people into the subject. He starts with it very abruptly. Evidently, James was quite abrupt in his personality. Uh, He can, if you read the book, at its very beginning, he's very abrupt. And if you read at the end, the end of it is very abrupt. He makes no bones about anything other than to say you are going to have trouble in your life. Not only are you going to have trouble, but there is a particular kind of manner, a particular style in which us Jesus people should reply and respond to that trouble. Somebody say amen. Amen. Now you heard me say Jesus people, right? Are you, am I a Jesus people? I, I hope so. <laughs> uh, the word Christian is never in the Bible. There, there's no, there's, you won't find the word Christian in the Bible, um, not in the manner in which we use it. They were not called Christians. They were called disciples. They were called Jesus people. <laughs> and that's what we are trying to be. And James is writing to the Jesus people. And he says, yep. Things are going to be difficult. Life's going to be hard. There is a very peculiar style you're going to have when you respond to trouble. Uh, Everybody who has ever lived has trouble in their life. You know that. Job says it famously. Man is born to trouble as the sparks fly upward. As natural as it is for heat to rise and sparks to rise in that heat, so is a man's life natural to have trouble. Uh, Our life is a few days and full of trouble. It's amazing if you read the Psalms and notice how much David has praise in direct response to trouble. You cannot read the Psalms without being continually reminded of David's trouble. He cries, be not far from me. 
Be not far from me, for trouble is near me over and over. In fact, you could quite truthfully say, you will not understand a praise service, a praise service with David leading it, unless we sing about trouble and victory. You want to talk about resurrecting the tabernacle of David? It goes like this. I got trouble, but I got hope. You want to talk about how David worshipped the Lord? I am the surrounded by enemies, but you're my salvation. You want to talk about that kind of worship? You cannot separate the reality of double trouble. <laughs> the reality of struggle from your praise. We fall into error when we see it any other way. We think that we praise God best when everything is going right. We think that we've been given a license to praise when we don't have trouble in our life. And we think trouble is kind of like a break to our praise momentum. And I would remind you today that that's not how David worshipped the Lord. David seems in the middle of his trouble to be even more motivated to glorify God and worship, worship the Lord with all his heart. Because trouble is part of the journey. It always discourages me when people use trouble as an excuse to stop magnifying the Lord. It discourages me in my expectation of the human heart, so to speak, when people People use trouble as a reason to quit believing, a reason to quit praying, a reason to quit worshiping, a reason to quit coming together and glorifying the Lord. I want to tell, I want to tell them that they've got it all backwards. Church is not a celebration of everything that's good in your life. It is praising the one who not only gave you the good, but is going to bring you through the bad. Church is where you come and you say, I've got a lot of trouble, but I've got a God who's bigger than my trouble. <laughs> and as Jesus people, we should have a very peculiar response to trouble. Uh, we love that past, that 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 scripture in the Bible where we are called a peculiar people, uh, called out of darkness into his marvelous light. This is exactly the kind of peculiarities that you would see among the Jesus people. Number one, they mourn, Paul says, but not like other people do. We have a hope that although we have loss here on earth, although we have parents and brothers and sisters uh, in the faith and family members who have gone on to their, to their reward, so to speak, they're in uh, Abraham's bosom, so to speak, to use a real churchified uh, language to describe it. They are with the Lord. They are not present. We mourn, yes, but we mourn with hope. And we rejoice in the fact that one of these days we're going to see them again. Isn't that odd? That, that isn't how the heathen are. They think all there is is this life. We mourn but not like the heathen do because we believe that God is going to resurrect this mortal body. Not only that, we respond to trouble differently. And James's point here is not just that life is full of trouble. His point is that if you're one of the Jesus people, you respond to trouble differently than people who haven't your hope and haven't your promises. Believe it or not, one of the most powerful parts of your testimony is not that you've got a chicken in every pot and a car in every driveway. One of the most powerful testimonies is how we handle setback and struggle, disappointment and pain. Life is full of trouble, yes, but trouble in the life of a believer is unique and it is different. We, if we are at the high point of faith, we can even look at our trouble with joy. You say, oh brother, there you go again. I hate when you get into that stuff that's hard to say amen to. 
I confess it can be hard to say amen. This is what makes faith people unique in that we are able to count it as joy when we fall into trials. Is that easy? Absolutely not. But there is no greater testimony, James will say in his epistle, of your faith than your ability to have confidence, faith, and joy in the middle of your trouble. His point is this. If your faith doesn't show up in your trouble, then I don't know if you have the right kind of faith. That's the whole point of it. I'm not going to take time to read his book. But when he talks about faith and works, he's not just talk about you, talks, talking about you becoming, you know, real churchy. He's talking about your ability to have faith show up in the middle of your trouble. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. Why? There is a direct link to them overcoming that and a crown of life which God has promised to him. I'm not here preaching a, a gospel of blessing them alone. I'm that wouldn't be uh, a little bit out of sight of our experience of life. Amen. I'm preaching a, a gospel of faith that shows up in the middle of your trouble. It shows up when you're crying. Your faith should show up when you're hurting. Your faith should report for duty in the middle of your loss. Your faith should visit you in the middle of your tears and say, uh, weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. This is one of the unique, the very unique elements of what it means to be a believer. What does it mean to be one of the Jesus people? We believe that in spite of setback, in spite of loss, we are going to make it. And blessing is somehow wrapped up in our overcoming of this trial. This is not a small thing. This is a big thing. This is not easy to understand. I, I have, as I have... Uh, grown, uh, I believe, more knowledgeable of the Scripture and more years studying it, I've realized this. The most profound truths are often the simple ones that you won't think about. You'll just brush over. The most profound truths are the simple one that if you're not careful, you will yawn through. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, we've heard that. Oh, but that's where the breadth and the depth of what it means to be a believer is. What that ability to face trouble in your life and say, I don't know how, but I'm going to make it through this. The ability to, to face pain and say, I cannot explain it in any way that might satisfy the skeptic. But this is what I know. When trouble comes, my faith shows up. And I'm able to believe God in the middle of my trouble, my setback, my suffering, and my loss. This is what it means to be one of the Jesus people. Trouble comes and faith is there to hold you all the way through it. You see, this is what we often do. And I want you to, I want you to hear me. There's so much on this in the Bible that I, I, I don't, I don't want to go spend too much time on it because I'm afraid I'll lose my audience. Uh, whenever you have a truth so simple that you're afraid you'll, uh, lose the audience, it's probably a sign that it's so deep that we've quit, we've quit thinking about it. <laughs> but I, I don't want to go through all the scriptures of this because it is from Genesis to Revelations. I just want to, uh, point out a few things you've heard before and you will hear again, but they are profound and fundamental. And that is this. So often we commit this error. We come to God and we pray for relief. We pray for relief. Oh God, I can't take it anymore. If that preacher would just pray for me and fix all my problems. If only we could get the, 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 the ladies' prayer team to get a hold of me and shake me back and forth for a while. Lord, I need relief. I can't take it anymore. And we come to God and we pray for relief. And you say, what's wrong with that? Well, I don't want to say anything's wrong with it. That's speaking a little too far. I, I just want to say it's a very human thing to do. <laughs> but have you ever thought... 
that when we come to God, just as often as we would pray for relief, we should pray that the Lord would repurpose us. And the Lord would redirect us. And the Lord would guide us through the trouble. Not for the sake of us suffering less. But for the sake of Him being glorified. And our testimony being strong. James is not afraid to draw a direct comparison. A direct comparison between what you're going through and a crown of life. He's not afraid to do that. He will very much draw your attention directly to what you're going through and the victory and the promises of God that are sent. And further, He's not going to let you blame God for it. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does He tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he's drawn away by his own desires and enticed. And when desires conceived, it births sin. And when sin grows up, it brings death. Do not be deceived, my brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. This is like a preacher saying, you need to be careful what you blame God for. If something is good in your life, it's okay to give God praise for the good because He is the author of every good and perfect gift. But you need to be careful about saying, God sent this to me or God is putting me through this. It is an error sometimes. For us to try to, it's an error all the time for us to try to assign assign blame to God. It's much better to be a praise maker and a worshiper. It goes like this. The good stuff in my life, God did that for me. The blessings in my life, God did that for me. This trouble, I'm going to make it through. This trouble, I'm going to make it through. Oh, but you don't know what I've gone through. That's true. You don't know what I've gone through. Either. (laughs) That's beside the point. Let's not be afraid to be honest about trouble in our life. There's going to be trouble. If Jesus himself had trouble, if all the disciples had trouble... If the early church had trouble, if when James is writing this, they're being persecuted. You know what a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, immature believers would have done is they'd have said, James, somehow we've missed the will of the Lord. This, temp- this, 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 this persecution that's come upon us, that is a sign that we are not in the will of the Lord. This trouble that's coming our way, it's a sign we are not in the will of the Lord. And James won't let him do it. Don't you say where it comes from. You give God for the good and you believe you're going to press through all the trouble. You believe you're going to make it. So, what am I getting at? I'm almost done. What am I getting at is this. Something powerful begins to work in your life when you decide to be a faith person. Now, we Pentecostals, we have a certain way of doing church. We have a certain way of, you know, we're aficionados of church. We're aficionados of preaching. We like a certain, this is my favorite. I, this is, we, we like that. And, and we enjoy church. It's our culture. And sometimes we forget of the, 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 the very foundational work that begins in someone's heart when they choose to be a faith person. Is this too simple for you? That means I'm doing good. They choose to be a faith person. There's 99 things they don't know. They don't, they can't explain the abomination of desolation. They don't understand the seven seals of revelations, etc. But they've made up in their mind they're going to be a faith person. That's literally where it starts. Abraham, will you leave? Will you leave this land of your comfort? And will you go? Will you start a journey with me? Will you look for a city of God? Will you do that, Abraham? Well, I don't know anything. Don't worry about it. Will you believe? I don't know where to start. Start where you are. Will you go? And Abraham decides, yes, I will go. He has not met Melchizedek. He does not have understanding. He's just starting on a faith journey. Believe it or not, we are all Abraham's children. The moment you decide, I want to be a faith person. I want to believe that somehow God can bring good out of what's going on in my life. 
I want to appeal to everyone here today, all of our guests and friends, all of our believers, doesn't matter how long you've been serving the Lord. I want to, I want to make this appeal to you. Ask yourself in the middle of your pain, now am I going to be a faith person or am I not going to be a faith person? You say, oh, that's too simple for me. I need to understand the 70 weeks of Daniel. No, this is what you need right here. Am I going to be a faith person? Looks like I'm going to lose my job. I don't know. I'm just upset. I'm worried. Are you going to be a faith person or are you not going to be a faith person? The doctor said this. The doctor said that. I got a bad report from the doctor. Yes, it happens. We're all going going to get sick and we're all going to pass at some stage we're all that's life okay are we going to be faith people or are we not going to be faith people let me tell you as for me and my house we're going to serve the lord as for me and my house we're going to believe that god can start something in us today And so there's so many needs represented. Whenever you get a group of people like this together, there's so many needs. There's the immediate needs that you have in your life and heart. And there's the needs that's in your family. There's the needs that you know about through your network of friends and on and on. There are these tremendous needs. What am I trying to get to here? We have to decide, I am going to believe God to bring me through this trouble. If he chooses to heal me, praise God. But either way, I'm a faith person. And I'm going to believe there is a crown of life. And although trouble may come, I'm going to praise Him. The wind comes, the storm blows. I'm going to praise Him. I am going to choose faith. Did you hear me? I am going to choose faith. Our musicians are coming. Let's all stand together in the house. I want to, I want to make the sincere challenge to every one of you to get simple. Get simple with the dilemmas of your life, the troubles, the, the, the challenges, the disappointments. Get simple. Can we believe God? I believe we can. Can we lay it at the altar? I believe we can. If you've been walking with the Lord long enough, you have some things on your back that if you're not careful, you can never really leave them at the altar. How many of you know what I'm talking about? You can never, you you get in the habit, you take it to the altar and you lay it in the altar and you say, thank you, Jesus. And then you go out and you talk and for a few moments, uh, you know, you, you at the altar and then you rush back down and you pick it back up and you put it back on the shoulder and you carry it again. Or let me, let me get simpler than you want to get. Okay. Let me get plum simple. That's country simple. Plum simple. Are you going to be a faith person or not? Are you going to believe God or not? You say, oh, but I've been praying and He hasn't fixed it yet. There you are, thinking in terms of relief. God, I'm leaving it with you. I'm trusting that you know the way that I take. I'm trusting that you can take my hand. You can give me direction. You might be in so much debt that you feel like you're never going to get out of debt. And that's what you fight about when you're home. You fight about money and debt. It seems impossible. Well, if that's your attitude, you never get started. Amen. We've got to believe God can make a difference. So right now, all across the church, I'd like you to think about the things that are weighing you down and challenging your faith. The things you have to make a decision about. I have to decide. I am going to believe God about this. You, 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 can you think a few? Ra- raise a hand. You, can you think of a few things? Right now, I've got, I've got to make a decision to trust God. Lord Jesus, you see every heart that's here today. You see every need represented by a raised hand. Oh God, we need you today to move in our spirit and minister to our heart. Lord Jesus, the first thing I want to ask you for is I want you to let wisdom begin to to work in our lives. And everybody here today that we can believe that there's more than just a short-term suffering and a short-term solution. That you can work out your will in our life in some powerful and beautiful way and Lord Jesus I want to believe that you can in some way after you've let us have enough wisdom to begin to understand I believe you could let faith begin to grow in
in our heart. Where even when it seems impossible, we choose faith and we speak faith and we pray faith and we live faith and we believe You are working in our midst. We choose to believe Your hand is at work among Your people. In Jesus' name we pray today. In Jesus' name we pray today. Amen, amen, amen. I want to believe, those of you who raised your hand, if you will, I'd like you to step out of where you are. I'd like you to come down to the front. We want to pray one for another here today. We want to turn this whole church, our goal today is to turn this whole church into a ministry place. And a ministry place, ministry is that which we help one another, that which we give to one another, that which we serve one to another. That's, that's where ministry happens. And so I want us, I want us to believe today that strength can flow through this whole house and hope can work in our hearts and lives. If you're near someone and you're comfortable with it and you feel appropriate with it, take their hand, pray one for another, turn around in your pew, reach out to someone, pray a, pray a, a, a blessing of strength upon them. Let's turn this whole house into a prayer service right now and let's let ministry move all across through every believer. We want the Spirit of the Lord to to touch every heart. I I don't want you to feel like God's far away from you today. I'd like this whole house to become a ministry session where we can pray one for another and we can believe that the touch of God is very near to us today. Let's pray all across the church. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We're believing you. We're trusting you today. You know the needs, God. You know the people who are... Thank you for watching Apostolic Radio Charlotte. Come, worship with us.